Hi everyone, in this introductory video to electrolysis we're going to be looking at the electrolysis of molten zinc chloride. So what I've got here is a power pack, the positive side is connected to an electrode here and we call this positive electrode the anode, the negative side is connected to another carbon rod and that is called the negative cathode. And in this dish I've got some solid zinc chloride and in a moment I'm going to start heating it up until it melts and then we'll see if we can do electrolysis on it. Electrolysis means splitting up using electricity. So we'll see if we can split the zinc chloride into some zinc and also chlorine. So here we can see the solid zinc chloride in the dish and the two carbon electrodes sticking into it and we can see at the moment that there's no electricity flowing through the circuit because solid ionic compounds can't conduct electricity because the ions aren't free to move. If you're not sure about that, click the link at the top to go back to properties of ionic compounds to refresh your memory. So we're going to start heating it up and we'll come back in a few minutes when it's molten. So we can see now that the zinc chloride is starting to melt in fact it's bubbling away so that's turned into molten zinc chloride and if we have a look at the bulb we can see now also that it, there's electricity going through the circuit because now the molten zinc chloride will conduct electricity because the ions are free to move so at the side that's connected to the positive of the power pack so the anode what we should see being formed there is some fluorine gas and the test for chlorine gas is it bleaches damp blue litmus paper and we can see there it's taken the colour out of the blue litmus paper. So that is chlorine gas. Now chlorine gas is toxic so we're not going to leave it on for too long. If we did we'd be able to smell the chlorine being given off as well. It would smell like a swimming pool. So we've got chlorine coming from the zinc chloride and if we lift it out of the molten zinc chloride at the other electrode we should be able to see and there it is we've also got some zinc on the negative electrode so that's zinc on one electrode and chlorine being given off the other so we've managed to split the zinc chloride into zinc and chlorine and that's what electrolysis is all about now we're going to try and understand what's going on during electrolysis. Let's take the example we've just seen in the practical activity, which was the electrolysis of molten zinc chloride. So here's the electrolysis cell. We've got two electrodes connected to a power supply and the liquid, once it's melted into a liquid, we call that the electrolyte. And that's just a liquid containing ions. So one side becomes positive and one electrode becomes negative. So how do we remember which is the anode and which is the cathode? Well, we remember PANIC and that stands for positive anode and negative is cathode. So we can now label the negative cathode on the right and in this case the positive anode is on the left. We also need to consider what ions zinc chloride is made up of. So zinc is in that central part of the periodic table, the transition metals, and if in doubt, they make two plus ions. And chloride, well, chlorine is in group seven, that's a halogen, they all make one minus ions. Now, during electrolysis, we need to remember opposite charges attract. So that means the zinc ions will move towards the negative cathode, so zinc is made at the cathode, as we saw in the practical. The chloride ions, because they're negative, they will be attracted towards the positive anode. So chlorine is made at the anode, which is what we saw, and it bleached the blue litmus paper that proved it was chlorine gas. So this is a classic case of electrolysis. Remember, electrolysis is splitting up a compound using electricity. So we can see we've got zinc being made at the cathode and chlorine being made at the anode. So we've managed to split apart the zinc and the chlorine in zinc chloride. 
This next section is just for higher tier students only, and that's how to write half equations for what's happening at each electrode. Now the golden rule is during electrolysis, ions change into atoms. So let's think about the example we've just considered, which is zinc chloride. At the cathode, we saw zinc ions changing into zinc atoms. So we've got zinc ions on the left, zinc atoms on the right. Now, because it's a two plus, we know that two electrons are going to be involved somewhere. Do, so do we put those two electrons on the left or do we put them on the right? Well, the answer is we'll put them on the left because the charge on each side of the equation has to balance. So on the left, we've got two plus and two minus that equals zero charge. And we've got zero charge on the right. So we've put it on the correct side. And you, there are rules you can follow. So, for example, at the... Um, cathode, they're always going to be gaining electrons like this. At the anode, we've got chloride ions changing into chlorine atoms. So here's the chloride ions changing into chlorine atoms. And that means we've only got one electron to consider because it's one minus charge. So does the electron go on the left or the right? Well, in this case, we're going to put the electron on the right so that the charge in the equation balances. That means that we've got one minus charge on the left and we've also got one minus charge on the right. If we tried to put it on the left, we'd have two minus on the left and no charge on the right. So it must go on the right in this case. And once again, at the anode, the electron will always go on the right hand side of the equation. But we've not quite finished with this one. We have to remember that chlorine is a halogen and halogens form what's called diatomic molecules. This means they go round in pairs. So instead of them just going round as Cl, they pair up as Cl2. So to get to that position, we simply double up in the second stage of this equation. In the next video, we're going to do lots more examples of um, electrolysis of molten compounds so if you're not quite there yet do check out the next video to consolidate what we've learned in this video also please remember to like and subscribe thank you for watching